Okay, a key here. Uh, okay, a key here. Oh, I get so confused using two languages. Okay, a key here we're checking the uh, voltage of the batteries while we're trying to use a blender on a cloudy day to find out how that works out. Okay. Here comes the blender. We're at 12.3 on the voltage on the batteries. We're not getting a lot of watts in. We're only getting 98 watts in. So 12.2. So they're blundering. 12.3, 12.2. And what I'm looking for here is if it's going to drop off a lot because I want to protect the batteries. Now what I should also do is check the wattage on the blender uh, and see, see how much wattage it uses. The blenders are pretty strong, so they're going to use a lot of watts, but they're also not heating and cooling things a lot. Things that heat and cool use a lot of wattage, but this blender is also strong. So uh, you get used to this living on solar power, trying to figure out what the effect is going to be. Now, people with big solar power systems, of course, don't have to worry about it at all. But we're trying to live with very small amount of resources. We don't want big battery banks and stuff. So, so far we're doing okay. Normally we would never do this. I would just say, hey, there's no sun, you can't use a blender. Of course, another option would be a bicycle blender. That would be ideal because people would get exercise and things would get blended and they can even like make margaritas at night or something. Except we don't have ice. Because we don't, oh, we're at 12.1. So we're going down. At 12.0, I'll start to think, huh, that's, that's a little bit weird. We've got 98 watts coming in. No, 97 watts. We're 12.1. Oh, the suspense, the suspense. <laughs> it's actually important. This is very much part of the Bosque experience is to figure out how we can live well with less resources. And, and so we want to live on very small solar power systems. A lot of people in the world are working on how we can produce more energy or produce more energy efficiently. But the most efficient thing to do is to use less energy to redesign our lifestyles, to rediscover the lifestyles of our ancestors, our grandparents, uh, rediscover the lifestyles of cavemen. And uh, we'll go ahead and keep some fancy things like solar panels because it's so nice to have lighting and people like blenders and stuff. I, I'm not going to buy another blender. I think if this blender breaks, which it eventually will, uh, we'll get a bicycle blender. We'll make one. Doing really good here, 12.1. I'm kind of surprised. Got 85 watts coming in. The other thing is that if it, if a device was plugged into this tiny power system that was too big, it could actually blow the fuse or damage the system. Oh, we're at 12.0. Oh, 12.1. So now we got clouds uh, affecting things. We're down to 84 watts incoming. 12.0, 12.0. If it goes down to 11.9, I'm going to say to stop. We went to 12.1. They just turned off the blender. I heard it turn off. Uh, and we went up to 12.1 volts, now 12.2. So it's recovering very quickly. What this is telling us is that even on a cloudy day, we can kind of use the blender. But I'm still suspicious that it's a bad solution overall. Interesting little test. Cool.